Hey Crossroads, Pastor Luke here again. We are continuing our Bible study on the nation of Israel, especially the leaders. We are drawing toward a close, but if you've missed any of the previous episodes, they're all available on YouTube. Feel free to check them out. You can go back. We'd love it if you would like to subscribe, share, drop some comments below if you have questions. Any of those things are always appreciated. I'm going to do a quick bit of recap. We've talked about various leaders. Leaders were patriarchs like uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were priests like Moses and Aaron. They were judges like the judges, uh, all, all the Deborah and Borak and all those guys. They were kings like Saul and David. And now we're getting into this place where it gets a little more murky. We now have a lot of prophets who are not necessarily leaders of the nation, but they lead the nation, right? There's not the person who has the title isn't always the leader and just having a title doesn't really make a leader and then there's some heroes that we're going to talk about toward the end we haven't quite gotten to them they i don't know they have various positions but we'll we'll look at some of those heroes in, in our last little bit the the reason i stop for this is what's happened for the most part up until now is we've been in a pretty obvious bible book chronology we started in genesis exodus leviticus all of these things lined up and we went in order well now as we get to the first kings second kings first chronicles second chronicles and the prophets area the books no longer go in this nice order, right? We had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. We had number, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We had Joshua, Judges, Samuel. And we're about to get a lot, a lot messier and a lot fuzzier. So take a look at this handy-dandy timeline that I found at pinelakechurch.org, or pinelake.org, which is a, a church, trying to help make sense. We talked very briefly last week about all the kings. There are a lot of kings. And you'll see here, there is Saul, David, and Solomon. And hopefully you can see this okay, but if not, it's on pinelake.org. Or you could throw me an email and I'll help you out. More here to illustrate, we then split the two kingdoms, northern and southern, and we have a list of kings and a list of kings. But what happens in the meantime of all of these kings is we have these prophets. And these prophets are the ones who wrote in the Bible. Like you'll find Joel, Obadiah. And so Obadiah is up here because he's a northern kingdom prophet back here in 848. Again, I've talked about years before. Years are rough. I wouldn't fight for any of these numbers, but I wouldn't really hold anyone to them. But we're just going to say in the, in the 840s, he's in the northern kingdom. So he's back here. But the book of Obadiah comes later on in the Bible. So we're getting to this more fuzzy time and there's stuff like Malachi, which actually is the last book of the Old Testament. But at the same time, there's Zedekiah, who you're going to read about in Kings or Chronicles. So we're, we're getting in, the, in a murkier area. I want you to just be able to see this. But the thing to grasp here is actually the end of the timeline. Again, we, we kind of covered the kings very briefly because sure, while they're leaders, they're not much in terms of leadership. Some of them have almost nothing to say. Most of them are more cautionary tales. But in 2 Kings chapter 17, this is the fall of Israel. <clears throat> For when the Lord tore Israel away from the kingdom of David, they chose Jeroboam, son of Nabat, as their king. But Jeroboam drew Israel away from following the Lord. <clears throat> so already the northern kingdom has gotten started with kings who are troubled. The very first one, the very first king of Israel, Israel, the northern kingdom, right? They're not, they're not united anymore. Has already started drawing them away from God and, fa uh, and made them commit a, commit a great sin, right? They are leading the people into sin. And the people of Israel persisted in the evil ways of Jeroboam. They did not turn from these sins until the Lord finally swept them away from his presence, just as his prophets had warned. Right? Prophets, these guys, they're warning. Hey, there's judgment coming. Stop. Behave yourselves. Turn back to God. Repent. Um, so Israel was exiled from their land to Assyria, where they remain to this day. Okay, there's, first off, they're exiled. The Assyrians come and destroy them. They end up in Assyria. 
where they remain to this day is obviously being written by the person who is capturing. So this day is not referring to today. But interestingly, these tribes are usually called the lost tribes of Israel. And the reason they're lost is when they are exiled out of the land, the Assyrians send them all over the place. What they're trying to do is they want to keep their population intact. They want to keep their workforce and their labor, but they don't want them back home where they all speak the same language, where they have um, emotional vested interests, where they have a love for the land. So they mix and match the people all over the place so that they're not such a military opposition. We don't really know what happens to these people from here. We don't know where they end up, how they intermarry, if, they, if some maybe try to sneak back to the southern kingdom, if they are drawn. Like we, the, king, the tribes are lost. Those ten tribes just kind of get lost in the shuffle. So we do still have a southern kingdom going on. Oh, by the way, sorry, not that it matters 100%, but the fall, this happens around 722, 721 BC. So that's... The BCs go in reverse order, so the smaller number is coming closer to Jesus. So it's about 700 plus years before Jesus. Still have a southern kingdom, Judah. Here you see prophets like Joel, Isaiah, Micah, Zephaniah, and here are their kings like Rehoboam, and then a whole bunch of people whose names you don't really recognize, maybe Uzziah, um, maybe Hezekiah, some of these guys going, Josiah. In the end, they have troubles too. Second Kings chapter 24. We're in, we're in the year 560, 586, 586 BC, somewhere in, in that range. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded the land of Judah. Jehoiakim surrendered and paid him tribute for three years, but then rebelled. So already Israel has been conquered, but they are they are like a, a client, a vassal state, you know, that you pay, you pay the king the king of Babylon, and they kind of leave you alone. Uh, but they rebelled. Then the Lord set bands of Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite, and Ammonite raiders against Judah to destroy it, just as the Lord had promised through the prophets. So if you go and you read these prophets, you're going to see lots of, kind of turn away, turn away from your sin, repent, or else the land will suffer, or else you will be cast out. And ultimately, that's what happened. Uh, these disasters happened to Judah because of the Lord's command. He decided to banish Judah from his presence because of the many sins of Manasseh. Manasseh being a tribe, not being like an individual person who had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood. The Lord would not forgive this. So what happens to us now, the point we're at is, Israel, or the Israelites, because it's not just Israel, the northern kingdom, it's the, the descendants of Abraham. They are in exile. They have been scattered about throughout the world, or throughout the region, because they have turned away from God. We're going to pick up uh, next week, and we're going to look a little more at the last little bit of, of what happens. There's one final point I want to draw your attention to, and it's this concept of who's really doing the leading. This line right here in the middle, these are the kings. These are the people who had the title. They have the name. It says King so-and-so. So you presume that they are the ones in charge. These people at the top and the bottom, they weren't called Prophet Joel. They were people who lived their lives. And in fact, they were ridiculed, sometimes persecuted by the king. They were ostracized, not exiled in the terms of what's going to come. But these are the people who now, as we look back, and once by the time they got into captivity, the Jews would look back and recognize, yeah, these guys were right. They were speaking for God. These were our prophets, but they were being ignored. Sometimes we find ourselves in places where maybe you've got a title. Maybe it says pastor, it says reverend, or it says boss, CEO. And the title says, oh, you're in the lead. But that is not the same as actually being the person who is committed to following God, who is pointing other people in the direction of God. The prophets are the true leaders because they are the voice 
of God. They are the ones speaking back to the people, trying to guide them and direct them, even when the people are turning away, right? We can find ourselves, in fact, we ought to find ourselves in a time and place right now where we are speaking truth to people, where we are trying to lead people back to God to direct them and guide them. It doesn't matter if they call you king or pastor or prophet or teacher. It doesn't matter the title. What matters is that you are the person who is sharing the true word of the Lord, who is truly doing the work of directing people back. And for Israel, as a, as a, for the, all of the Israelites, even before they split, where they have their problem is that their leaders are no longer the ones who are truly following God and truly being led of God. Their leaders are just ones who inherited titles. So they get to be in charge because of who their dad was or because of who they killed to take over. But they don't have any real spiritual leadership, spiritual authority. They lead the people astray. So far, so they end up in exile. They end up destroyed. Huge percentages, thousands of people are killed in the process because the ones who were supposed to be leaders aren't. And not enough of the people listen to the ones who truly are leaders. In our lives today, we have the opportunity to do that. So I'm going to close in prayer. Lord Jesus, help us to lead. God, not about title, not about position. Help us to be the ones who are pointing people to you, who are crying to you know, make straight the path in the wilderness, to make way for you, to come back to you. God, help us to be true leaders in the line of the prophets, not as in the line of the kings. God, I pray that you would be with each person who follows you. God, help us to steer others toward you. Give us the opportunity to lead and guide others and give us your spirit to be with us in this endeavor. God, I pray your blessing on each person who is with us today. Jesus, we pray it in your name. Amen. God bless you, Crossroads. We'll see you next time.